Bing, bang, 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 Wow. Look, look where we are now. We are in the basement doing the podcast. Yep. Wow. The Wolf Den podcast. Amazing. Can't believe it. Can't believe it's been a whole eight minutes since everyone's <laughs> been waiting and watching for this, for the chair to be in the way. Thank you. Thank you, Will. There you go. Hey, everybody. Hello, Welcome guys. Podcast. So much news going on, yes, man. Yes, but first, a moment of silence for the Xbox 360 marketplace. Is there a story for that? I mean, what's the story? It's just closed. Yeah, it's just closed. <laughs> I, I, was, I was thinking of like a way to make that the, uh, the, the stream. I mean, like, but uh, really... We there, already did one. Yeah, we did. When they were talking about yes. closing it. I thought like, you know, at most we could do like little anecdotes about it. Like I actually, a friend of mine gave me his old 360 a while ago. And the weekend the store was closing, I actually finally reformatted it and set it up. I was like going through the store to see what was left and like so, what I can get and don't stuff. Don't we have an Xbox 360? We have one, but like that's at our parents' house and a friend was getting rid of his 360 and rather than him throw it out, I saved it. Okay. <laughs> um, Why don't you save the one that's at a parent's house? Because I figured you'd want to save that one because that's the Star Wars one. I do like the Star Wars yeah. one. Eventually, I would like to have a little gallery of all yeah. this stuff here somewhere. Uh, I will note, though, the Xbox 360 um, user experience sucks. <laughs> so it's not Blades, right? It's not Blades anymore. It's like that Metro design that they tried to make happen. Yeah, you don't like that? No, I don't like it because I'm used to modern. The, well, the big problem is I log in. First of all, to reformat the, to reset it to factory settings, you have to specifically select to reformat the hard drive. That's in a different menu than the main system options. Uh, initialize doesn't reformat the hard drive. Initialize just like reboots it for some reason. Okay. Uh, so I finally learned how to reformat the hard drive. I log into my account. I had to change my password because apparently on the Xbox 360, your Microsoft password can't be more than 16 characters and mine was more than 16 characters. What? Yeah, so I had to change my password to something shorter. And then finally, I lo I'm no wonder they knock these things offline. <laughs> finally, I'm able to log in. I go to my games and my games list is empty because I don't have any games on the system. So I have to go to my account. I have to go down to uh, it's either purchases or downloads. And there is all of my games in reverse chronological order. And if I want to download them, I got to go one by one by one. You know one. what? You're explaining all this as if it's like a huge pain in the ass. The Switch is just like that. Oh, is it? Yeah. If you want to down re-download all your games, it is not easy. No. There is a place, like like you explained, yeah. there's a place where you can do with through check boxes you can download the stuff that you but need. Like, but I, it's not obvious. But like on Xbox One and Series and even PS4 and 5, if I go to my library, it'll just list all my yeah. games regardless of whether or not they're on the hard drive. Yeah. This I gotta like go through all these hoops and stuff. Yeah, the Switch is the same. Yeah. There, there, there is a section in like the eShop settings or something yeah. where it'll list out the stuff that you have, but it's not... It it takes me a while to find it every time I need to find yeah. it. Um also, I find I forgot about this. If you load a game on a uh if you load a game, a disc game, a physical game into the 360 and then you inject it, it forgets you <laughs> that game in your library. It just oh, yeah. removes it. Yeah. 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 That makes sense too. Yeah. Um I want to give a shout out to the Metro design mm. because I think that was designed at the time when Microsoft was working on having a sort of hybrid touchscreen interface mm -hmm. for Windows. Yeah. And as a touchscreen interface, I think that's not a bad solution. No, it was it was weird because it was good for a touchscreen interface. It wasn't bad for like a big screen interface, like a TV interface, but for regular ass personal computing. No, it's awful. Terrible. No, <laughs> like like at that, what was that? Win Windows 8. Windows 8. So. Yeah. You would just immediately hit the start button when you yeah. when you turned the computer on to get rid of the Metro yeah. UI. So it was kind of like it, it's a weird in between between having a, a, a mouse and keyboard experience and a touchscreen experience, but we're still not there with hybrid touchscreen yeah. and mouse and keyboard interfaces. Yeah. So like that kind of solved problems that we still haven't figured out yet. Yeah. So I, I want to give it credit for that. But uh, if you're on a mouse and keyboard, it's trash. Yeah. And if you're on a controller, 
it's also trash. It's less. I would say it's less trash than a than a mouse and keyboard. Okay. Yeah. No. I, Only because like the that. the icons are big, so it makes it like yeah. navigating on a TV easier. Everyone likes the blades. From, the blades were fun from Xbox yeah. 360. The blades were fun. Honestly, Xbox Series is fun. Yeah, I'm fine with but, that. But like you know, the Xbox 360 definitely Microsoft's best system. Some of my favorite gaming experiences were from that system. I think that was. I don't want to say that's where gaming peaked, but like it's been like coasting since that generation. I would say it was a pretty big leap. Yeah. Uh, we always we should do an episode where we uh attribute uh like every console generation had like a gimmick or so or some sort yeah. of uh, thing to attribute to it, and we we go th- we we know what all of them are. Mm-hmm. but we should list them out and define them yeah but for the xbox 360 generation it was the internet it was having like a like a good oh, stable yeah. online experience and that was the big thing about the xbox 360 marketplace was like it was the first time they really pushed downloading games like from the internet onto your uh, yeah. console it started with little games like the xbox live arcade um and then like slowly it transitioned to full retail games like you can download mass effect and the halo games that was huge having uh being able to download stuff off the marketplace. Yeah. That was a huge yeah. indie boom around that time. Yeah. Uh it's crazy because now everyone all the indie games just go to Steam. Yeah. But at that time, all the indie games wanted yeah. to be on Xbox because they were trying to make it as easy as possible for yeah. people to upload And they did. Their games. Like that was the era like indie game the movie, you know, Braid and Super Meat Boy and Fez. Yeah, they made like, a whole ass movie around Those it. games like got big from being on the Xbox 360 marketplace. And yeah. fun fact, this is also a user experience uh, problem with the Xbox 360 marketplace. Nowadays, it's all uh, lumped into one, but they had a specific section, one for Xbox Live Arcade and one for full retail games. So if I want X- uh, Perfect Dark was an Xbox Live Arcade game, but mm-hmm. I specifically go to Xbox Live Arcade, not the main game section, which was like your Call of Duties and your Gears of Wars. Yeah, that's dumb wars. because it also diminishes uh, Xbox Live Arcade games. Yeah. It, it, it makes it seem like they're not they're real other, games. Yeah, they've been othered, essentially. Yeah. I mean, nowadays you have a different problem where all the games are lumped together and it's hard for indie games to get traction next yeah. to the big AAA games. Like back then, that that was a great way to like highlight them. Like the summer of arcade was like, now you it's, know, everyone looked forward to them. It's really hard to highlight uh, indie games. Yeah. But you have a really good chance of succeeding like beyond mm-hmm. uh, 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 normal thought because you are up against you are with the triple a games yes so a game like shovel knight is yeah. is powerhouse and through yeah. everything um but it's up to the individual uh platform holders to to highlight the indie stuff like nintendo does it sometimes with their indie worlds they try to push some indie stuff mm-hmm. uh, xbox did too uh at the time every once in a while they would try to push some stuff playstation yeah. you know they every once in a while they'll throw an indie game in for free on uh playstation uh plus premium or whatever yeah um but yeah i i would say allowing them to run with the big dogs and then highlighting the good ones is the way to go yep so, so that, that's the xbox that's 360. 360 rip xbox 360 it's, it, look it still works you can still download your old games uh you can still play physical games on it um, you just can't play online or use the marketplace. That is if your Xbox 360 even works. Yes. Um, so which one did you get? Did you get the old one? Or the new yeah, one? it's the old one. It's like the original model, really? but you know. And I, it works? Yeah, I don't think it's a Jasper. It's I think it is a Jasper motherboard. Oh, the revision. Yeah. So. He also gave me his Kinect. I ain't fucking plugging that thing no, in. No, I don't do that. Um, yeah. Just a note, I looked up. We have 120 games for the Xbox 360 in our little document is that the most still i believe that's the most that's crazy yeah so i gotta have more for switch i gotta probably i gotta put all i also like i want to do the thing in excel where you like you know can do the pie chart of like how how much on what so oh i can i can set that up yeah uh yeah xbox 360 uh that was when we had uh our own jobs yeah we could get our own games and it was a pretty long generation yeah and we bought a lot of games yeah. and played a lot of games. And like 360 games, like on the used market, are still like fairly inexpensive, which is surprising because like now the system is like retro, but I guess because they're still modern enough and there, there were so many of them that like you can 
find games relatively cheap. There were a lot of games that are still being copied today, like Assassin's Creed and stuff. Assassin's Creed, Gears, uh, Halo. Uh, but there's also a lot of games that uh, weren't trying to be the same as other games. Yeah. Like Mirror's Edge mm -hmm. and uh, Vanquish, you know, like those yeah. types of games were doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. So you get like, like sometimes we like to trash older games for not having like a unified control scheme yeah. or being a little confusing because of the control scheme or whatever. But sometimes because things aren't uh, uh, industry standard, everybody's trying their own stuff out of it. You get a lot of really yeah. cool experimentation, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, go try some old games on 360. Yeah. A lot of those games. You can get them on Steam. A lot of them are available. There are, I believe, what is it, 200 games that are lost uh, to time now that the storefront closed, mm -hmm. like you, that you just can't play anymore on any system. Uh, also, they're working on getting 360 emulation. Uh, yeah. Uh, to, to, to work good. I, know I, it, I like, think it works pretty decent. I think it, PlayStation 3 is a big problem. PlayStation 3 is the bigger problem, yeah, because that has like a very specific proprietary architecture. Xbox 360 is a power PC based system yeah and that's like people can emulate that much easier all right speaking of old games uh main topic well let's well, let's yes. thank some people oh yes you people there's a lot of you people yeah. uh george mcfarlane thanks for 40 months damn did absolutely nothing happen this week also hi will i'm always happy when my subscription renews on a podcast day uh you'd be correct hey escrima thanks for the six months podcast day hype Sukasa. Thank you for the 31 months. 31 months. Let's go. Ray Danny, thanks for the 25 months. Jeffrey Sorensen, thanks for the 37 months. Hey. DJ Skeletor with the f -f 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 five gifted subs. Sub, 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 sub. <laughs> Kelly, thanks for the uh, two months. Katakoe, Kata thanks for the eight months. Wow, a lot of you people. Uber Yoshi, thanks for the seven months. Thank you for the shows. What version of Mario 64 do you recommend on a China handheld? <laughs> um... That, that feels wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, we know what you mean. We just don't know if the wording is proper. <laughs> it just feels feels wrong. Um, I mean, just regular Mario 64. Yeah. If you can somehow get the PC port. The PC port is the best version. We'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Big L, thanks for the Prime. John McCheese, thanks for the 20 months. And Seesaw, thanks for the 46 months. Jesus. There's a lot of you. Uh, yeah, not a lot happened in the last week. So nope. we're talking about uh, uh, this tweet that was uh, show that I, that came across my timeline. I think like two weeks ago, this tweet came across my timeline. Mm -hmm. um, here it is. It's by v Vanished Sa San. Super Mario 64, while a good game in its own right, has absolutely aged terribly and isn't even on par with its contemporary from the same era. I feel the game is hard carried by silly glitches, modding, and brand recognition rather than actual merit in a lot of discussion. First he, of all... He goes on, there's a thread of like all the different... We'll go through the thread, yeah. but what do you think of the bold claim already? It's a very bold claim. Very bold claim. Uh, I think it would be fair to call Mario 64 dated. Yeah, uh, I, I agree that it is definitely. Yeah, there are aspects of it that are definitely. I aged. think to just uh, to say it's aged terribly might be a little extreme. It's a little extreme, you know, especially because there are definitely games from that era that have aged worse. A lot of N sixty four games, yeah. have not aged well. Yeah, so. I would say N uh, Mario sixty four is among the best i i would i will it i will just say though like poorly probably to their credit they do say while well, mario 64 is a good game in its own right so they're acknowledging that the game is good right a lot of people you know will just flat out say that mario 64 is bad because it's old i take issue with the uh isn't even on par with its contemporaries from the same era there were some horrible games yeah. back then. <laughs> yeah. Mario 64 is one of the best games in what, 1996? Yeah. 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 There's nothing that even comes close. I think, I think it would be better to say that like it might be a little bit basic compared to some of the bet the good 
platformers of the era like banjo kazooie like um spyro like banjo Conker. kazooie sucks <laughs> i played that recently when yeah. it came to nintendo switch online because i've never played it before right. that game is bad <laughs> if you want to talk about a game that's aged probably. right right uh conquer's bad for me then that's uh <laughs> It's a more evolved version. Of- Kay Ballard in the chat says, GoldenEye was a bad game. That ban, wording's wrong. Ban them. <laughs> GoldenEye did not age well, but GoldenEye was an incredible game. <laughs> okay, now you're riling me up here. <laughs> Games like GoldenEye and Mario 64, yes, they're aged, they're dated, hmm. but... You know, they they still hold a lot of value and ideas to them that work well in a modern era that just, you know, maybe need to be adapted differently. Yeah. Like, yes, the control scheme in GoldenEye in 2024 is kind of butt. It's, so. <laughs> that's, but that's what we're saying. Like, if a game aged poorly, mm-hmm. it means, like, somebody who's been playing games now, year 2024. Yeah going back and playing one of these games like Mario 64, like GoldenEye, how are they going to receive it? Right. And these people going back and playing GoldenEye for the first time ever in yeah. these, these days with a with a friggin' pro controller on the Nintendo <laughs> Switch, having horrible times yes. because the controls are rough. Yeah. And I can see where the issues are with Mario 64 too. Mm-hmm. The camera is the biggest problem. Yeah. The camera is terrible in, in Mario 64. Uh, but it's manageable. Yes. Um... Another huge problem with Mario 64 is uh, there's 120 stars. Yeah. Some of them are just impossible to figure out on your own. Yeah. One of them is using a cannon to shoot yourself at the corner of a wall so it yeah. explodes. How would you ever know if there's a star yeah. in there? You know. And there's a lot of stars that are like that. Mm-hmm. Even back in the day, I remember looking up on n64.com yeah. and... Uh, Trying to figure out how to get all 120. And I remember yeah. there was like maybe and like three to five that I had to look up. And, and we out. had the strategy guide for it. And so and we still had to like look up yeah. how to like do I remember it I remember being on on uh game facts or or yeah. or, so, or, or whatever text based uh guide trying yeah. to figure out how to get all 120 stars. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how much after how much longer after the game came out that I did that. Yeah. Um but getting the Regular, what, 70 stars? You yeah, should be like that, totally yeah. fine d- d- doing that. Um, and there's a lot of other jank stuff where, like, uh, Mario does this weird turnaround. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like if you, if you turn around, uh, if you're at a standstill and you, like, go to move really quick, sometimes Mario will do, uh, like, this big 180 turn. Yeah. And sometimes that'll knock you off a platform or something. Uh, sometimes the camera gets stuck in some weird spots. Uh, there's a lot of weird interactions between objects. Yeah. Um, but I think that's just you're comparing Mario 64 to modern Mario, which yeah. is like perfect. Like yeah. like uh, Mario Galaxy, Mario Odyssey. Those games have they're spotless. Yeah. And yeah, you're gonna have glitches. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of games today. That are amazing. Yeah. That also have glitches. <laughs> I also think too, like Mario 64 was like very ambitious for its time. Like there were 3D platformers before, but like they all handled vastly differently from the rest. Like Tomb Raider 1 was around the same time. Mm-hmm. And that like Laura moved on like a grid based system. Like it it was not as fluid as Mario 64 was. Like her jumping had to be very precise. Mario could be a little bit more loose with is jumping yeah you know to the point where you know it, it's you know mythology at this point but the n64 controller was specifically designed for mario 64 mm-hmm. and only mario 64 yeah. like all the other games that came after it had to like you know reconfigure themselves for that controller all because mario 64 needed a specific you know input device yeah and the way like they they made a Mario control so well in this game that uh, it shot Nintendo light years ahead of everybody else. Yeah. Where everyone else was trying to figure out what they did so right to yeah. make this game work. And mm-hmm. then they were copying that in future platformers yeah. and, and future third-person games. 
Um, you got to remember that a lot of games before this game came out controlled just fucking terribly. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, Mario 64, a little ugly. It's a little yeah. bit ugly uh, because the textures are all really bad. Yeah. And that's because there's so much in the game, they ran out of memory for the textures. Yeah. So all of the textures are like, like what, 10 pixels wide and yeah, then repeated because yeah. uh, they needed to save space. So it is what it is. There's uglier N64 there games. There are much uglier N64 games. There are uglier games, period. I don't think the aesthetics of the game should really be a demerit towards you know whether or not the game is good. i mean comparatively there's still some pretty ugly games these days yeah <laughs> that people love outs uh, this is i'm reading the tweet more uh the tweet thread outside of bonking and the atrocious turning that's the thing i was talking about yeah i'd say mario's movement is a highlight of the game an incredibly freeing move set with a surplus of moves to take advantage of it's a shame a lot of levels in the game don't let you take advantage of it to its full extent especially and then he shows uh three of the levels we got uh this is cool cool mountain uh a pyramid one i forgot the name of that oh one. yeah and a little is this a little big no no this is not i forgot i forgot the name of this one Three of the levels that are just mountains that you climb up, yeah. basically. Um, it, late game levels, which rely on silly gimmicks that add nothing but tedium to proper traversal or generally have one way of traversing the level, which in itself isn't particularly fun or well-designed. That's just a scathing review. Yeah. It had... A pretty great myriad of levels. Yeah, that, that, like it had it had variety. You know, it had like you know the mountain levels and the flat levels and the maze like levels and the and, underwater and levels. There to show you the different ways you can traverse yeah. using Mario's move set. Yeah, and some of these levels have uh, the stars in all different wacky ways, mm -hmm. so that it feels like you're playing a totally different level when you're getting different stars. Yeah. So uh, I think that's pretty unfair there's like yeah. so many levels to this game and having a level where you just move vertically i think isn't a negative yeah it's just showing you that you could move vertically in the game and like you gotta remember too up until this point you know the majority of mario games the, the mainline mario games controlled one way you move the plumber from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen yeah. you know here they're trying to show you we're in full 3d so we have so many more places to move to you can go forward you can go back you can go left you can go right you can go up you can go down so they had to make all these different levels to showcase that ability uh, later in the thread he shows uh, uh crash bandicoot and i don't i haven't gotten that far i don't know why <laughs> but crash bandicoot you move forward and yeah. sometimes you move to the right yeah and that's the game. Yeah. So like, uh, it's, yeah, it's, I don't it's understand. It's not a good comparison. Like, it really isn't. Like Crash Bandicoot, like it's a much more simplistic game in terms of yeah. like what it's trying to do. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Mario sixty four is a really damn ugly game, relying on flat vec uh, vertex colors and stock photos from CD albums for its texture work. This isn't even inherently bad because Zelda Ocarina of Time does the same thing. However, its usage is far superior and much less distracting. Ocarina of Time also came out like what, two years after Mario 64? Yeah. So like it had more time to like develop, to learn the architecture of the N64. But that's that's the thing. We're we're talking a lot about at the time. Yeah. It was great, it was groundbreaking, but we're talking about looking back at it from now. And I think the textures are pretty bad. They're pretty rough looking back at it. But it kind of looks like, it's like a 90s. It looks 90s. Yeah, like that was the aesthetic <laughs> of the time. And back then, you know, graphics like evolved. It was much more easy to see like the evolution of graphics on a system compared to what it is now. Like a launch PS4 game kind of looks relatively similar to, a, to like a later stage PS4 game. Back on the N64 or the PlayStation 1, like a launch title looks substantially different from like a final game release on the system. You look at Mario 64, one of the first games on the system, and then you look at Conker's Bad Fur Day, one of the last games on the system. It's night and day. Yeah. You know, they had a lot to work with. Yeah. But Mario paved the way for all of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of amazing what they were able to achieve with those shitty textures. Mm hmm. Um, Moving on, comparing Mario 64 to other series' first 3D outings really puts it into perspective. 
how shit it looks. I'm willing to give it leeway considering it was an N64 launch title, but it's insane how these other games received far more far flack than Super Mario 64. The first picture he has here is uh uh Sonic Adventure. Yeah. Which came out two years later. Came out in yeah, 1998 in Japan. And it I mean <laughs> it's not like known for being like an amazing looking no. game. I mean, like on a technical Also, I'm almost positive this is not a running on a Dreamcast. I'm uh, almost positive this is like the GameCube version. <laughs> yeah, something's different here. Uh, even assuming it is the Dreamcast version, like the Dreamcast version, yeah, came out two years later and also was on more advanced hardware. The Dreamcast was a more powerful system. That's not a fair comparison at all. The next uh, picture is Crash Bandicoot, which did look good. It looks good for the time. Yeah, for but the time. But that's a completely different scope of game. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one is just Mario 64. And like, honestly, that looks good. Yeah, the, that, the screenshot actually doesn't look bad. Yeah. Again, for 1996. Yeah. I'm trying to... Uh, I want to know where he got this picture of... Uh, I want to know where he got this picture from. Crash Bandicoot uh, also debuted in 1996. Again, Crash Bandicoot looks fine. It's just yeah. a completely different uh, ballpark. I, I don't think it's it, it's anywhere close to Mario 64. Yeah. No, I can't. I can't find it other than. I thought I could reverse image search and see where he got it. From. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, moving on. More. We got. This has nothing to do with my main point whatsoever. Uh, but it's also funny how Mario sixty four got a remake that rectifies a few of its main issues, yet at the same time adds even bigger, arguably worse problems like monkey paws. Yeah, I don't know why he's bringing up like Mario 64 DS, like the DS version of the game. Because like, I don't know anybody who prefers that version to the original. Mostly because uh, the DS did not have an analog stick and Mario 64 needs an analog stick to function properly. So they had to find like all these like ways to like make it work. So th that's one of the criticisms. I honestly don't think the D-pad is that terrible for controlling it. I just think, you know, you're playing other characters that aren't Mario. Yeah. And it kind of forces you to do that. Uh, and then it adds some other stuff that's just a little weird. Yeah. Uh, that's not to say it's bad. Um, but then he points at Ocarina of Time 3D and Star Fox 3D saying that they didn't uh, have issues like that. Um, I'd argue that Ocarina of Time 3D needed more quality of life fixes. Yeah. It was literally just a port. Yeah. Uh, I think it had little, like... It had like little things here and there. It had like little hints for yeah. where to go and stuff, but they weren't that great. Mm -hmm. uh, it needed more shit like that. Yeah. Um, and Star Fox 3D was great. I like Star mm -hmm. Fox 64. So Star Fox 3D was great. Um, and then there's more. I hope people don't come out of this thread thinking I hate Mario 64 because I don't. I have a lot of fond memories. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's just so bizarre seeing how many people glaze it. That's, uh, that's a Gen Z term for, for like coming all over something. <laughs> glaze i like why that <laughs> phrase though like why couldn't you like say anything else uh no game is perfect especially not this one uh super metro and metro fusion are perfect games though <laughs> don't play those <laughs> uh and that's really it okay so there's a lot of screenshots here that are that look like uh mario 64 with rtx on or something mm -hmm. like they, they look like like crazy looking renders um i would say Mario 64 uh, aged fine. I wouldn't yeah. say it aged like amazing. Yeah. Because of some little problems like the camera. Uh, a little bit of the movement is a little weird. Yeah. But again, there's platformers these days that control worse than Mario 64 did. Yeah. Um, and there's some weird stars that I think aren't that great. Yeah. Uh, however, I would say if you have never played Mario 64 before and you want to play it right now, uh, the best way to do it is with the PC port. Um, how do you even find that these days? Uh, I was going to say, I don't know if that's like really the best, that it may be technically the best way to play it. But the, to me, the best way to play it is through Switch Online with the Nintendo 64 controller that you can get. Because like, like I said, that game was designed specifically for that controller. I'll push so, you back a little bit and okay. say with the uh, Retro Fighters with the retro, or, or like a modernized <laughs> version of the N64 controller. Yeah. 
So because you know it was designed for that controller, so it needs to be like as close to that as possible. Most N64 games you want to play with a N64 style controller. Um because like to play the PC port of Mario 64 or like a, a version with like mods and stuff, that's putting a lot of extra work and a lot of extra barriers in the way of just wanting to play the game, you know? Yeah, if you wanted to play it the easiest way possible, the yeah. uh, the the one on Switch Online is uh is fine. It, it's it's very easy. Yeah. You're just gonna have a shitty camera. Um I can't find the PC port. Hmm. Mario 64 PC. Is this it? No, this is from seven years ago. What the <laughs> wow. hell? Oh, no, this is just the Mario 64 actual trailer. There's an itch.io for the PC port. Okay. Uh, Surprise, that's still up. So the first comment is, I don't know how to grab the big bomb guy. <laughs> Same. Oh, man. I can't play. Skill issue. I can't find the PC port. The hmm. reason why the PC port is the best is because uh, it's widescreen. Yeah. It's as high resolution as you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, it fixes the camera. So you can play with a Xbox controller and the right stick yeah. is just a free look rotating camera. Um, what else? Uh, oh, there are mods. W there's settings where you can uh, make it so that if you grab a star, it doesn't launch you out of the level. You can just go get the next star. Oh, the Odyssey so, method. Yes, so that's very helpful. Uh, and true 60 frames. Yes, it's true 60 frames per second, which N64 games all run like sub 30. Yeah. Some of them run at 20. Oh, that's interesting because I know for some stars, they actually change the level yeah. subtly. So when you enter the level, you can choose which star you want to get. Okay. Because right? some of the stars do change the yeah. level or start you off in another spot. Yeah. Um, also, uh, instead of the Mario 64 PC port, I think you can run the game using parallel 64 and there are mods for that particular emulator uh where you can get the free look rotating camera okay. and stuff uh there's ways to do it uh this bob doesn't tell me which link is good link now i have viruses on my computer okay well i didn't tell you that which one i, didn't, uh, I don't know uh where it went i played it and it was great now i can't find it I did play, uh, there's a ton of Mario 64 ROM hacks and stuff. And yeah. I played one that was like only up where you just have to climb, climb, climb. And if you fall, you fall way to the bottom. Yeah. Uh, and that one had an option where the camera was fixed. And I think that that was run through Parallel 64. I'm trying to find it now. Analog camera for Mario 64. There you go. Parallel Launcher is the name of the la the emulator launcher. Okay. Uh, look into that, and then I think you can find little hacks. Google Mario 64 PC. I literally did. Literally, what I just did. I'll do it again. Look at all these. Look at all these purple links. <laughs> oh, fucking god, dude. Okay, blue disc, blue dusk, smart ass. Where's the download link? <laughs> oh, it does have under uh, programs and scripts and tabs. All right, well, that's all I got to say. Uh, to to close it off, I think that it. Uh, I understand why people say it has aged poorly. Yeah. Uh, I think it hasn't aged amazing but i think it aged a lot better than people give it credit for yeah i do not hesitate to recommend this game to people who have never played mario 64 before yeah whereas games like goldeneye i'm like i don't know i'm gonna like it yeah <laughs> i like it and i yeah. i can pick up goldeneye and play just like i did right when i was seven yeah. you know but uh but I, I understand why people who have never played it before would have a lot of problems with it. I do think, though, like, you know, if you are a 
fan of the medium and you like want to learn more about it and its history and like its roots and stuff, then it is important to check out old games like Mario 64, like GoldenEye. Um, even if they're not your cup of tea or like they haven't aged well, just to see like how far the medium has come. Right. You know, you don't get Mario Odyssey without Mario 64. You don't get like shit like Sly Cooper without Mario 64. Like they all have yeah, like no. a connection to it. You Mario know? 64, again, jumped the whole industry light years ahead. Yeah. Doesn't the PC port need the ROM? Yeah, you need the ROM no matter what. Mm -hmm. And that's up to you. Uh, let's do the backlog. Backlog! 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 Hey guys, backlog time. This is a show where we re do it. This is a uh, this is a show or a segment of uh, the podcast youtubecom slash podcast where we go through our entire backlog of video game, our entire collection, every game we've ever bought, we put into an Excel spreadsheet. And today we're gonna pick one of them at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. Nine sixty two four. Yeah. Excuse me. Ever growing. Yeah. Five forty two. Five forty two. We were around that last time. Uh, this is a PlayStation 2 game. So, sorry, Xbox 360. Uh, the Mega Man Anniversary Collection for the PlayStation oh. 2. Uh, I didn't know we had this. I have to look into this, because what's on this? Uh, this is uh, the PS2 era, so I think it's like the first eight. Uh, yeah, it's before, it's before 9 and 10 came Included out. games. Mega Man, Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, Mega Man 4, Mega Man 5, Mega Man 6, Mega Man 7... Mega Man The Power Battles, mm -hmm. Mega Man 2 The Power Fighters, which are the arcade games. Yeah. And Mega Man 8. So, 1 through 8 and the two arcade games. Yes. Uh, I didn't know we had this either. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, I can tell you right now, I've definitely never played this game. I've played the Mega Man games before. Yeah. You know, but this specific collection... Uh, I have not played. I do know that this collection had an interesting history. Uh, it came out on the PS2 and the GameCube at launch, and then the original Xbox a year later. Um, it, there, it was mildly, not mildly, uh, it came out and got good reviews overall. Um, but over time, you started to hear about like, you know, it, it became like a controversial subject in like the Mega Man fan community because the emulation of the games weren't great. It wasn't an authentic replication I didn't of the know games. That. Um, the big deal was on the GameCube version, they flipped the jump and shoot buttons instead of it being, I think, was it A, A shoots and B jumps? And then on GameCube, they flipped it. Oh. Because the GameCube has like that weird control. As a layout. giant A button. Yeah. But, so they had to like. But they were still in the right spot. Yeah. I do remember like, though, like if you look up reviews from the time, like that was a big sticking point. Yeah. I would hate game. that too. Yeah. We must have gotten this in some weird GameStop situation. Yo, I, I feel like I wanted. Think so, yeah. I, there was like a weird, like either sale or somebody traded it in or left it there yeah. or like slipped through the system and I just acquired it somehow. Yeah. Uh, because I could see myself wanting this. Um, this was the first collection. Yeah. So we had Mega Man games. We didn't have all of them. No, I think we and had like one or two of them. This was the first time to get all of them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, now we have uh, the collection. The legacy collection. The legacy collections. Uh, this is essentially the legacy collection. Yes. But it's both of them. Right? No. It no. is because the legacy collection goes all the way up to 10. Uh, this, only, th this is the first eight. Mega Man 9 and 10 were um, 360 games. They were Wii games. This, is, uh, this predates that. Right, right. This came out at a time when, like, you know, they weren't really doing anything with classic Mega Man. They were more focused on pushing Mega Man X, and that was like, but it was the era where we got like the bad Mega Man X games, like X Seven and X Eight. Right. So like Capcom put this out, and then they're like, "Let's see if people like old Mega Man," and people did. So Legacy Collection One goes all the way up to Mega Man Six, which are the NES games. Right. Yeah. And this one goes to eight. Yeah, Seven is an SNES game, and Mega Man Eight is a PS One and Saturn game. Right, right, right. Yeah. 
Um, I don't love the NES games. Yeah. You want to talk about games that like age poorly? <laughs> like, yeah. Like I like Mega Man three because we had it growing yeah. up and it's okay. Mega Man one is not good. No, Mega Man one is like genuinely a bad game. Yeah. Mega Man two is fine. Mega Man three is fine. Uh, four is the one that introduces the, the mega buster. And I forget that that's not in Mega Man two and three the charge shot. Yeah. 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 So, uh, then like, which one introduces the dash? Do any of them? Where he introduces the slide. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the early ones are a little rough. Yeah. Um, and they're hard. They're very, they're very, very hard. hard. They're hard, be, you know, on a challenge level, but they're also hard on a technical level because there's like a lot of slowdown and screen flicker that affects the way you play the games, and you you have to like compensate for that constantly. I think this collection actually fixes it because it's on more powerful hardware. I hear good things about seven and eight. Yeah. 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 I think, what are we looking at now? Is this seven? Uh, no, I think that's eight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where are the power battles? Cause those, I started playing those on my arcade cabinet. Uh, it's actually pretty sick. Yeah. I think this is it. Oh yeah. The power battle. This is it. Uh, they're great as yeah. arcade games. They're pretty good. Nice. Uh, it's it's like a weird mix between Mega Man yeah. and like Street Fighter. Um, it's, I mean, y you pick a character and you're versing other characters from the whole like mm -hmm. uh, uh, the roster of of Mega Man throughout the years. Yeah. Um, but it feels like a boss rush mode of, okay. of Mega Man. It's like it's awesome. Um. So this you can probably you can emulate this pretty easily. Yeah, <laughs> it, it runs on a uh, CPS two, okay, uh, which is Capcom's uh, chip. It's, yeah. it's their arcade mm -hmm. chip, um, and it's pretty awesome. I, I and it's something that uh, you would never be able to play on a console outside of getting this one collection. Yeah, you know, you can't just. Uh, Wait, is this not? Is this the second one? No, this is the first one for sure. Okay. I might be thinking of the second one. No, no, they have the same. Okay, it looked like they were about to load into a level, but it right. is really just a boss rush mode. Um, But it's cool. I think that uh, this collection specifically is a great way to try this game out. But also, you're proficient in emulation. It's cool to be able to emulate... Uh, the CPS2 uh, uh, system. Um, the arcade games were later uh, released as part of the Capcom Arcade Stadium. Oh, that's cool. So you, you can get them there if you have Capcom Arcade Stadium. That, um, yeah, that's the game where the game's free and then you buy each game inside yeah. of it. It's like microtransactions yeah. inside. Okay. So that, that might be pretty cheap. And you can yeah. get that on the Switch. That, yeah. that should be pretty easy for people to, to try. So some of the things that this collection did... Um, the NES games, their sounds were remixed um, to make them a little different from the original release. Uh, Mega Man 6 rearranged the music incorrectly, like it mastered them incorrectly, and there was excessive peaking. Oh, my God. Uh, Mega Man 7, they censored the word damn. It was changed to darn. Oh, darn. Uh, the graphics of the Mega Man uh, walking away from Wily's castle are absent from the credits sequence of Mega Man 7 as the developers were unable to port certain N SNES graphical effects. Uh, so yeah, that's what I mean by like the emulation wasn't done properly. It's not like a direct one-to-one -one translation of the original system to the modern systems. Look at the horse guy. Ah. So... This is not the best way to play the NES game. First of no. all, the any well or the SNES games, I guess. No, yeah. First of all, the NES games not great. Yeah, already don't like them yeah. that much. Um, Only play them if you're like fifty <laughs> <laughs> or super into Mega Man. Yeah. Um. So already, this is a hard sell telling somebody to buy this, yeah. this collection. Yeah. And if you want to play these games. You can get them all elsewhere. Yeah. The only one where it might be, uh, I, I mean, not as easy to get are the, are the arcade games. Yeah. You can get them in the arcade collection. Yeah. Uh, and that's basically it, is the arcade collection. I think is the only place you can get it. Yeah. Or this. Yeah. Uh, and playing the arcade games this way is probably not so bad. Uh, but all of the other games, you can play those uh, on the Legacy Collection. 
So I'll also note that the first six games in this uh, Mega Man 1 through 6 uh, feature what's known as Navi mode. That's like a, it's like a helper mode for like an easy mode. That was originally in introduced in the PlayStation, the Japanese PlayStation ports of the original Rock Band games. I didn't know they, they had that. Yeah. Does the, the modern Legacy Collection have anything like that? Do you know? Or is it? Is that something that would only be exclusive to this? I have no idea. Okay. But Sir Griff Griffick uh, says the Legacy Collection 1 and 2 combo pack on Steam is 12 bucks. Oh, so it doesn't even matter. Just get that. I'm sure get it that. has an easy mode. Um, there was one other thing. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a collection, so they, want, they throw in a lot of extra stuff. Um, it includes artwork, music, uh, bonus videos. The PS2 version of the game uh, contains the pilot episode for the Ruby Spears Mega Man animated series. Do you remember that cartoon that we used to watch all the time yeah. on Saturday morning? Yeah, that Where one. Where Cuts Man was weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're gonna if you're gonna get one, get the PS2 version because that that show actually rules. The <laughs> GameCube and the Xbox versions uh, contain the Mega Man episode of uh, from G4's Icons TV show. What the fuck? Exactly. You know. Who cares? Like, <laughs> seriously. Uh, the Xbox version also includes the first episode of Mega Man NT Warrior, which is based on Mega Man Battle Network. Yeah, people like that. I know. I'm not. It's okay. Um, and the PS2 and the Xbox versions include some arranged music for the first six games. Um, also, the original, originally presented in the Complete Works version. So, I mean, look, just get the PS2 ver. It don't get any of them. Get the modern Legacy Collection because, like, that's the best option to play these games. If you're like at a convention or like a secondhand store and you see these, maybe get the PS2 version to watch the Ruby Spears cartoon or just watch it on YouTube. Ruby Spears, what is that? I that, know the cartoon, but why, why are you saying Ruby Spears? That's the company. Oh, Ruby okay. Spears is the company. Uh, so I just I was looking it up. Uh, there is there doesn't seem to be in any sort of easy mode for the legacy collection of the original Mega Man games. Right. However, there are save states and rewind. Okay. So uh, there you go. That is easy mode. Yeah. Uh, I guess this version didn't have that because it's PlayStation Two. Yeah. They probably even know to, to do something like that. Uh, except Mega Man X Legacy Collection did have an easy mode. Okay. Uh, I don't know what the easy mode did. I'm looking at it a Destructoid article right now. Rookie uh, Hunter mode, an easy setting that just unveiled for both Mega Man X Legacy Collection. Due out later this month, the sets contain Mega Man X through X8, and Rookie Hunter is an option for every game. It halves damage, okay. but it also removes spikes and pit deaths for four to eight. Okay. That <laughs> sounds like yeah. way too easy. Uh, uh, especially because there are also save states for yeah. those games. Uh, there was a, a Mega Man X collection that was released like around the same time as the Mega Man Legacy collection. Uh, the Mega Man Anniversary collection that we're talking about right now. Um, that was Mega Man X through X6. Um, yeah, so this was at the time when Capcom was like, what happens if we just start collecting Mega Man games? They're like, we care? got this IP that everyone loves, but we, we don't know what we're we doing can't with make it. a new game with yeah. it. Nobody likes the new stuff. Let's yeah. keep giving them the old stuff. Uh, they Capcom has recently said they love Mega Man, and Mega Man is one of their biggest sellers. Yeah. Uh, but they still can't make a new one. Yeah. For whatever reason. All right. Uh, thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. Yeah. We'll see you at a podcast sometime. A live show. Bye. Bye. Not you. You stay. Yeah. You're stuck with us. Fuck with us, goddammit. Uh, Riley with the 23 months. Yo, what's up, Wolf Bros? How's your Tuesday? You guys see the new Astrobot controller? I think it looks cute, and I'm V excited to grab the pre order next week. Let's bring that story Let's just right, right up to talk the, about to it. The top, That's baby. right. First look Astrobot limited edition dual sense wireless controller. He is. That's now, it. I'm a little disappointed because I thought that this was an actual screen. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it does look awesome. It does though. look really cool. This is yeah the best Dual Sense controller. Ah, uh, maybe like the Spider Man one is kind of cool. Spider Man one's pretty cool. The the God of War one's really cool. You ever see the you've seen the God of War one? I vaguely remember. I'm trying to. I feel like I remember. Yeah, the God of yeah. I'm remembering one that was. Not official. 
that was better than this. Okay. Or am I thinking of the Dual Shock Four? I because uh, I'm trying to think what the limited edition Dual Senses were. There's the Spider-Man one. There's that one. The God of War one. There's um there's Astro Bot one now. The LeBron James one, not cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, and then we also got a. Oh, never mind. What, what are you looking for? I'm looking for a tweet from our dad. Oh God. <laughs> he quote tweeted him. I said, "I do not need another PS5 controller." And then he quote tweeted it and said, "No, you do not." Hashtag whooped in. He's got to make sure he throw that in. Got to make sure he does that. So uh, yeah, this is a really cool uh, controller. Uh, I I don't need another one. I got too many of them. Yeah. I'm just more excited for the game. Yeah. Uh, this game is gonna be good. How many dual sense? I have three. Yeah, I have three dual sense controllers. They used to send me every color. Right. Uh, I don't think they like me anymore. No. Well, you should have been nicer about the portal. Nice about the portal should be nice about the VR. Every time they send me something, I trash it. <laughs> uh, if the touchpad could blink at me when I played, they could have my money now. If it ha- if it was a screen or did yeah, so- or like lit that, up in some way, that like that shit drives me nuts. Like I know why they can't do it, but like my brain just can't accept the fact that it's not a screen and it's not gonna blink at me. You know. Yeah. Like, as a rational human being, I get it. I understand why it's not a screen and why it's not really doing that. But, like, uh, like the, the reptilian brain in me that, like, loves they like, could put fiction. a light behind it. Yeah. All right. Uh, we can stick with Sony. Yeah. Uh, Sony testing <laughs> three new neat features on PS5 after latest update. Yes. Uh, as the PlayStation 5 nears its four-year anniversary, the platform team at uh, Sony is continuing to cook up all in small improvements to help players get the most out of the console. The last, the latest batch of changes uh, will soon te- get to test our hyper niche, but still pretty cool. Uh, the first new feature going into early beta starting July 25th is the audio profile for headphones and earbuds. Instead of needing to tweak the settings each time, the console will let players save custom settings based on what sounds best to them and for certain games. Maybe you want a different set of tweaks uh, when you're playing a multiplayer shooter versus a moody horror game. Uh, For example, uh, your personalized 3D audio profile may enable you to better sense the position of characters and objects in the game world more clearly than before, making the experience more immersive. Sony's VP of product uh, management uh, Hiromi uh, Wakai wrote on the PlayStation blog. I've been using uh, my like in ear monitors yeah. uh, for like competitive games. I'm great. I used to use like, I used to want to use gaming headphones. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I like the in ears because I, I don't like having yeah. over the ear headphones sitting on top of my, my dome. Yeah. And uh, they sound great. So. Yeah. So well now you can like tweak it a little bit more to like to take full advantage of your. So it it seems like it'll remember what volume levels you have yeah. for different games, which yeah. I guess makes sense because if there's like a horror game that like blows your eardrums out, yeah, you want to lower that, and then you plug it in and play like Death Stranding, you know, you might yeah. want to raise it up a little bit. So yeah, that makes sense. That's pretty cool. Uh, there's more custom remote play settings are also going into testing. This will let players. Uh, authorize which friend and family member accounts have authorization to access their console for streaming to their phones, laptops, or PlayStation portals. Uh, the writer is tempted to see how well they can play games on their buddy's console five miles away. Both of these new settings options are available on all PS5 models. I guess that's cool that the options there, but that sounds like hell. Yeah. Like- it's like for me to log into your PS5 with my account. Yeah, like, like technically it shouldn't really make much of a difference. Yeah. But you'll hear the PS5 turn on. Yeah. If you if if it's a living room TV with that stupid HDMI thing that turns the TV on, yeah. which I think I have. Yeah. Uh you could just start playing a game in my living room and it'll yeah. blast through <laughs> the whole house. Um what Sony is calling adaptive charging for DualSense controllers and other peripherals, however, is only available on the new PS5 Slim models released last year. This feature will save power by only charging your connected controller when its battery is low rather than keeping the USB ports powered on even when the device uh, devices are fully juiced. 
while most users will have to wait until these features go live in an official update to try them uh anyone will be uh, everyone will get to play around with the PS5's latest firmware version out today. Players can now ask uh, their console to show them game help for a, for a game rather than needing to find it on the home screen. Uh, they can also share links to their game sessions with QR codes. Uh, yeah. So that last feature is pretty cool mm -hmm. uh, because you want to maintain a good lifespan for your DualSense controller. But yeah. That could cause an issue. Like you could pick up your controller and it could have half battery. Yeah. You know, because it wasn't charging. Uh, that could be a little, uh, that could be a little uh, interesting. Yeah. All right. I mean, that's fine. That's yeah. good. It's oh, always it's great, great when they update. Yeah. And it seems like these console. like are, these are good updates. Again, like the, the remote play thing is a little weird. And I don't know how practical that's really going to be. I mean, more remote play options are better. Yeah. Uh, it's good that they continue to work on that. They should work on getting fucking PlayStation Now on there. Yeah. Uh, you want to do one more PlayStation story? Sure. The PSVR 2, uh, now $200 off. Yeah, so did they ever release the cable to get it to work on PC? I think so. Why don't so, I have it? Because uh, Sony doesn't like you anymore, remember? Sony doesn't like me. Uh, so the Sony Summer Sale has started with some hefty hardware and software savings across its catalog. One of the biggest discounts, however, is for its PSVR 2 headset, which is $349.99 this week. It was $549.99, a savings of more than 37% off the normal price. The deal is valid not just at the PlayStation Store, but also Best Buy, GameStop, Target, and Walmart. GameStop is also selling a PSVR 2 bundle with Horizon Call of the Mountain for $400. Again, $200 off the retail price. I So everyone says this is like the most technologically advanced like VR headset for the price that it is. Yeah. I got to say, I don't know if $350 is, is worth it still. It's so hard to justify a VR price tag, you know, because they are, they are expensive, yeah. especially when, like, what, the MetaQuest 2 is, like, $200? It's so cheap, and you don't need a PlayStation. Yeah. And, you like, don't, you don't need anything. And, yeah, like, some people say, like, oh, well, it's not as advanced or as good as, like, you know, the more expensive models. But, like, it really most doesn't people matter. don't care. The, the biggest problem with VR is setting it up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, there's people, like, we know people who have, like, a VR setup. And yeah. they got, like, fucking sensors all over the room and shit. And yeah. they use it all the time and stuff. If you don't, most people aren't going to use it all the time. Yeah. You want to sit down and play a game after a hard day of work. You know, you're... You just want to sit on your ass and play You're sitting on the yeah. couch, you're picking up the controller, you're hitting the PlayStation button, and everything turns on. Yeah. If you want to play VR, you got to get the headset, plug it in, put it on, calibrate everything, and then yeah. play. And it's a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. So, uh, no, I don't, I don't think... I don't even think there's any killer apps. No. So The, the PC adapter uh, is coming August 7th. So oh, next okay. week. <laughs> okay. I just clicked on the article and uh, the PlayStation blog shows uh, the, the, the headset plugged into what I can only assume is a PC. Yeah. Although it looks like an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> and it shows Half-Life Alex on yeah. the monitor. So that's pretty cool that they're mm -hmm. showcasing a game that's on another platform. Yeah. You might as well get Quest for PC gameplay. The unfortunate yeah. part of PSVR 2 is that most of the features that make it so advanced work won't work on PC. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I mean, I want to get the adapter to just try it. Yeah. I've actually never plugged uh, an Oculus, or, or I'm sorry, the, the MetaQuest. I've yeah. never plugged that into the, the PC either. So I guess I could try them both out. Does it come with controllers or no? It comes with controllers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the... First PlayStation VR, uh, I got it without controllers because it was more expensive with the controllers. Yeah. And I didn't want to play any games that required the controllers. Uh, all right. Uh, are we talking about the actor strike now? Yeah. Let's talk about the actor strike and why you don't support unions. So Will <laughs> thought this was going to be the main topic. I and, did. And I said, no one cares about this. <laughs> Obviously, people care about yes. it. Yes. Obviously, this is a big deal, important thing. Yes. But... As a YouTube title and thumbnail, I don't think anybody's clicking on this. Is what I mean. Uh, it is like about like a few days late, so I don't know if like the. Still, yeah. I don't think yeah. anybody's gonna be like, "Ooh, I want to hear about the actor strike." I want to you know? hear what two losers from Long Island want to say about the actor strike. So the best thing to do is to bait 
everybody into hearing about the yes. actor strike. So here you go. All right. Uh, Hollywood video game performers announced that they would go on strike on Thursday, uh, throwing part of the entertainment industry into another work stoppage after talks uh after talks for a new contract with major game studios broke down over Ooh. artificial intelligence protection. See, Bob's already bored of this. Um, the strike I heard AI and yeah. that was it for- The strike, the second for video game voice actors and motion capture performances under the uh SAG Astra uh will begin on it will begin at 12.01 a.m. Friday. So it's already begun. Uh, the move comes after nearly two years of negotiations with gaming giants, including divisions of Activision, Warner Brothers, and uh, Walt Disney uh, over new interactive media agreements. Uh, SAG Astra negotiators say gains have been made over wages and job safety in the video game contracts, but that the two sides remain split over the regulation of generative AI. A spokesperson for the video game for the video game producers uh audrey cooling said the studio the studio is offering ai protections uh but sag astra's negotiating committee said that the studio's definition of who uh of who constitutes a performer is key to understanding the issue of who would be protected uh the industry has told us point blank that they do not necessarily consider everyone who is rendering movement performance to be a performer that is covered by the collective bargaining agreement, SAG Astra Chief Contacts Officer Ray Rodriguez said in a news conference Thursday afternoon. He said some physical performances are being treated as data. Uh, without guardrails, uh game companies could train AI to replicate the an actor's voice or create a digital replica of their likeness without consent or fair compensation, the union said. Uh, We strike as a matter of last resort. We have given this process absolutely as much time as we possibly can, uh, Rodriguez told reporters. Um, We have exhausted the other possibilities, and that is why we are doing it now. Cooling said that the company's offers uh, extends meaningful AI protections. We are disappointed the union has chosen to walk away when we were so close to a deal and we remain prepared to resume negotiations, she said. Andy Norris, an actor and member of the union's negotiating committee, said that those who do stunt work or creative performances would still be at risk uh, under the game company's offer. Uh, The performers who bring their body of work to these games create a wholly create a whole variety of characters and all of that work uh, must be covered. Their proposal would carve out anything that does not look or sound identical to me as I sit here when in truth uh, on any given week, I am a zombie. I am a soldier. I am a zombie soldier. Norris said uh, we cannot and will not accept that a stunt or movement performer giving a full performance on a stage next to a voice actor. Isn't a performer. Uh, The global video game industry generates uh, well over $100 billion in profit annually, according to game market forecaster Nuzu. Uh, The people who design and bring those games to life are the driving force behind these successes, uh, SAG Astra said. Members voted overwhelmingly last year to give leadership the authority to strike. Concerns about the movie studio, concerns about how movie studios will use AI help fuel last year's film and television strikes by the union, which lasted four months. The last interactive contract, which expired in November 2022, did not provide protections around AI, but but secured a bonus compensation structure for voice actors and performers, uh, performance capture artists, uh, after an 11-month strike that began in October 2016. That work stoppage marked the first major labor action from SAG-AFTRA following the merger of Hollywood's two largest actors' unions in 2012. The video game agreement covers more than 2,500 off-camera voiceover performers, on-camera motion capture and stunt performers, stunt coordinators, singers, dancers, puppeteers, and background performers. Um, Amid the tension, amid amid the tense interactive negotiations, SAG Astra created a separate contract in February that covered independent and lower budget video game projects. The tiered budget... uh, the tiered budget independent interactive agreement contains some of the protections on AI that the video game industry titans have rejected. Games signed an interim interactive media agreement, tiered budget independence. Ah, what happened? I lost it. Oh no. I am currently looking up uh, some TikTok that I saw. Yes. I think it's by Joe Zieja, uh-huh. who uh, he worked on some Persona games, it looks like. Yeah. Um, there was a case where he heard a clip. They, they, I think they, I, it might have been one of the Persona games where they, they like Persona Three Reloaded. Yeah. Um. 
there was a clip of a of a thing that he did not say. Uh and he was like, "Hey, I didn't say this." And yeah. they were like, "Oh, yeah, we just figured it would be too much to call you in, so we just used AI to like redo it." Yeah. And obviously that's like not cool that's because like, yeah, because you get paid to do the yeah. voice work you know? i mean that's what that that's what this whole thing is about yeah. you know like the the actors come in they say all of their dialogue you know and then you know for additional work or possibly even like a sequel rather than calling the actors back in they just hit some keys and fart out like new dialogue yeah or even now, now too with like the motion capture performers like they could take their work and like manipulate it through ai to like do in other games that they're not you know yeah, necessarily sign I mean, up for there's been protections for things like this before like like when when apple got a voice for siri like they had to have a licensing agreement like we're gonna use this forever mm -hmm. you know uh and that the voice actress who did that was under the impression that all the work i'm gonna do now is gonna be apples forever you right. know uh people who do motion capture work they have to there has to be agreements in there like we if if it's for like Naughty Dog, like mm -hmm. we can use this for future games, you well, know, and then that's more money, right? But like yeah. they have to be properly compensated for yeah. it. That's the thing. Like, you know, the higher ups think that just using AI, you know, means that they don't have to now compensate the performers yeah. for their work because you know you did the work already, and now the machine is doing the work for the future. Yeah, and we've again we've done we've had cases like this in the past and, and and there there have been provisions put in place to protect people like this just because it's ai doesn't mean you can skirt around well, those same protections now they're trying are, to skirt around it exactly. because it's yeah. ai because it's a yeah. new technology it's different from what they used to do what they used to do is just like have it on a database and just use it again you know yeah but i'm i'm saying that it's the same provisions. It's just they're skirting around it by calling it something different. Right. But it's it's the, it's the same as just taking someone's likeness and using it again. Yeah. Taking someone's work from a different project and using it again on another project. It's like you got to pay a licensing. If there's if there were licensing provisions in the contract, you got to pay the licensing no matter how many yeah. times you use it. Especially if you're copying someone's voice. Like yeah. it's very obvious you're using someone's voice in a new game. Yeah. You know. So. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that companies are getting uh, uh, kind of older for that. Yeah, the companies need to uh, have a provision in the contract and say, "Hey, uh, we want to be able to use AI in the future if you're not around or something." Right, and then that means more money for the voice or actor or actors who's they doing should it. just they shouldn't even have to do that. Cause at least in terms of voice acting, like. I'm not saying voice acting is easy, but in terms <laughs> of like getting an actor to record yeah. dialogue in a booth for 20 minutes, it's like that, that is easier to do than having to fly them out to like location and film something there. You can, you know, most voice actors have equipment in their home that they can do, like, do something quick and send it over. A lot of like modern technology is good enough where you can record dialogue over a zoom meeting and use it you know in a game so and that's how they do it mostly now yeah they do it over zoom fucking like you know on bluey the mom and the dad have never met they live in different states in australia and they recorded separately <laughs> and then they just mash them together and it makes the best show on television <laughs> so like it's possible to get dialogue done you know regardless of how many miles apart people are uh, I I think that it's inevitable that AI has a has a hand in it because uh, you look at something like the finals where the announcer yeah. is uh, partially or a, a lot of it is AI because there's things that are happening in the multiplayer game that uh, they need to announce on the fly right. so they need a script to do that. I don't think that that's uh, that egregious, but. The voice actor needs to know they are voicing a character that will be used for AI because their voice is going to be used on a much broader scale than what they initially recorded. I think the problem and that's a completely different compensation. I think the problem is, you know, what happened with the finals, it sets a bad precedent. 
you know, yes, you can use it for a game that like has a lot of things happening on the fly and it needs to like the, the, the dial needs to adjust accordingly, but like you can then take that same principle and apply it to like uncharted where you just get Nolan North to record like the, the cutscene dialogue and then like for the, you know, the interstitial gameplay, then that's all AI because it can adjust to him like bouncing off a wall or picking something well, up. And... They would have to tell him we're going to use AI for part of your, your thing, but, and he would need to be compensated for it. Well, I can also see him not wanting to do it because, yeah, and, then, and then he gets to say, I'm not going to be in this game. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, that's a big deal. Cause Nolan North is Nathan Drake. I know he would, ha he would be able to put a foot yeah. down and be like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. I, I get, I understand AI as a tool in certain aspects. Uh, like for example, how is Apple going to get a new Siri voice? Like they, yeah. they have to pay somebody to mm -hmm. at least program the AI with a voice to train yeah. it and stuff. So uh, there is a, 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 an area for, for that where it makes sense. Yeah. But right now companies are using it in a nefarious way to skirt around paying people. And it, yeah. this is just a new provision on top of licensing. Yeah. Like if someone wants to use my footage in a TV commercial, I get more money, right. you know, it, it, that's just, you, you're using it out of the scope that was originally planned. Right. If you're going to use my voice in your AI game, I want more money because right. it's outside of the scope that I originally planned. It's, it's new technologies and it's scary and we got to figure it out. But yeah, the hardest thing is figuring it out with our governing bodies because they don't know fucking anything <laughs> about any new technology. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, what's this? Uh, some games are not affected by the strike. No. Uh, according to SAG Astra, uh, says all members who want to show solidarity with the union can elect uh, voluntarily not to work, uh, imitating that it believes uh, the strike could be more disruptive than previously suspected and impact non-struck games. Members who want to show solidarity with the union can elect voluntarily not to work on these titles, SAG Astra's chief contact officer, uh, Ray Rodriguez, um, said. Uh, and we know that many of our members are going to become unavailable to work on those. Uh, so while non-struck games like GTA 6 may not be subject to a strike in a technical sense, their production is also subject to being disrupted by members who do not want to work without the protection of AI terms and who uh, don't want to undermine solidarity with the union. So some games of, I, I don't, I forgot what the specifics are, but I think some games that are like already in development or have like, you know, provisions in place already um, are exempt from, you know, the strike they the actors can continue to work on them um i don't you know i think you know they're striking with specific companies and i, and I, I know take two is one of them but i don't think rockstar is yeah it, it keeps saying that grand theft auto 6 is not affected yeah which is crazy i yeah. don't know this that doesn't make any sense to me uh their production is also subject to being disputed by members who don't want to work without the protection of AI. So they're like, they can. Yeah. It's like you're you can strike if you want. Yeah. You don't have to. That's which so is, weird. It's just very weird because like with the actor strike, it was like, and the writer strike it was like hard line. You know, pencils down. So walk off the set. Yeah. The the actor strike started right before the Oppenheimer premiere, and all the actors went home. It kind of sounds like they just don't want to strike gta 6 this is such a big deal i'm trying to see if there are any other games that are not affected because i i think they're just saying gta 6 because it's the biggest thing yeah but uh, i think that it just sounds like they don't have to strike if they don't want to strike which... games that began production before august 2023 will not be included in the strike according to the terms that means that gta 6 is a non-struck game non-struck titles may still be indirectly affected by the strike however also, like, that's, like, before AI was, like, yeah. uh, they, they signed their contracts before AI needed uh, or would have any provisions. Yeah. But that's kind of stupid, too, because AI needs to be added to the contract, yeah. not the other way around. Is, we're not under the assumption that you're allowed to use AI for my voice. We're on, the, the AI needs to be added to the contract. Yeah. Because it shouldn't hold up in court. 
like if I didn't sign to say that my voice could be used at, to train AI, then yeah. you can't do that, you know? Well, that's the thing. They don't want to use their voices to train AI because that means for future games, they don't need them. They just need the yeah. AI. Yeah. And they're not going to pay you because you're not doing the work. The AI is doing the work. Yeah. You know, the guy who's programming the AI is doing the work. Yeah. I think that legally that should fall under the using your likeness. I mean, provision. legally, yes. Yeah. But as of right now, it doesn't. No, I think it. Sh I think it should. I, I think it hasn't been uh, uh, fought in court. Right. As, as, as uh, there's no like president right now. But well, I, I th there was a court case that said that uh, AI generated work cannot be copyrighted because a human did not write it. That, yeah. So. Yeah. That that makes sense. Yeah. We're gonna have a lot of presidents go, going. Yeah. Forward. But I like to think of the uh, the the court case with uh, Back to the Future, Back to the Future Two. We yeah. talked about this. Um, they just used his likeness, the dad. They just used his yeah. likeness, and like obviously you can't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's AI would be similar. Yeah. Like you can't just have me in the first game and then not pay me for the second game, but put me in the second game anyway. You can't do that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on. Update the demos on Steam. Uh oh. I know this is a uh, this is a good thing. Uh, with thousands of playable demos uh, launching on Steam every year and millions of players trying them out often as part of the Steam Next Fest, uh, we've noticed some trends in feedback from both developers and players about the process and functionality. We've put together an update based on that feedback. As a reminder, you can always find great demos on the Steam Demo Hub. Uh, demos now behave better in the Steam library. We've made a few updates to how demos appear and behave within the Steam library. Here are the key items. You can now add demos to your library without having to immediately install them. Just oh. click on the new add to library button next to the demos. You may or may not uh, be ready to install while using the mobile app, for instance. Um, Demos can be installed even if you already own the full game. Primarily, this will make it easier for developers to test demos, but will also help players more easily manage installing slash uninstalling demos. Okay, that was that's a good feature yeah. because I had Berserk Boy mm -hmm. before it came out, and then I wasn't allowed to show footage of the game that wasn't in the demo yeah. and I could not use I could not play the demo yeah. because I had the full game. So I didn't know what was in the demo and what was yeah, so yeah. I I I had a I had issues there. Now I could just download the demo as well as also have yeah. the full. So that's good. Uh demos can be explicitly removed from an account by right clicking um uh, then going to manage then remove from account. When a demo is uninstalled it will automatically be removed from your library. This uh, just all seems like good quality of life. Yeah. Things. Demos can now have a separate store page. By default, free demos appear as a button on the full games store page, but developers have been asking for a way to enable the full store page to better describe the contents of the demo, add separate screenshots, upload a trailer, and specify support features. Um, so that is now possible and you will find that clicking on a demo sometimes loads a full demo store page while others will take you to the full games page with a button to, uh, to install the demo, uh, tight connection with a full game standalone demo store pages will automatically display both the demo install button as well as a widget for linking back to the full game for players to ins for players interested in wishlisting or purchasing the full game. User reviews for demos. If a developer has chosen to enable a store page for their demo, it will also be possible for players uh, to players of the demo to post user reviews. Um, these reviews and review scores will appear on the demo store page, just like reviews on any other free games on Steam. Note that if the developer has chosen not to have a separate store page for the demo, then user reviews will not be enabled for the demo. That I like that because sometimes demo is worse. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, demos now appear in the Steam store. Demos now behave more like free games and can appear in the same uh, sections and lists. For example, demos can appear uh, on the Steam homepage and charts such as the new and trending and on the new on Steam page and on relevant tags and category pages. We've even we've also made some changes to the thresholds for free products to appear in those sections to better balance them with paid products. Uh, wishlist notifications when demos become available. We've also we've now also made it so that when a demo becomes available for the first time for a game that you have on your Steam wish list or from a developer you follow, Steam can send you an email and a mobile notification about that demo. So yeah, uh, 
That's also good. I didn't realize that there weren't wish list notifications for demos. Obviously, yeah. I want that. Yeah. These all just seem like obvious quality of life things that should have been there in the first place. Yeah. Well, like sometimes like you think of something like you don't think of it until like it happens. Yeah. You know, like you don't realize that like, you know, maybe you want to know if a demo becomes available for a game you have on your wish list. To, to be fair, Steam had some of the best demo functionality yeah. that I've ever seen. So uh, they were already light years ahead of other yeah. platforms. The demos that are available on Steam makes uh, it's one of my favorite parts of the Steam Deck mm -hmm. is, is is being able to be like, hey, try this game out, and there's a free demo, so yeah. you could just immediately try it and see if you like it. Uh, that's the easiest way to su suggest uh, suggest games. To people. Yeah, there's an FAQ at the bottom, and the first one says, "What's the deal with the demo icon? Is it a plate? Is it a vinyl record?" And the <laughs> answer is that classic icon, my friend, is from the days when demos were commonly distributed through the post office. Yeah, it's a it's a compact disc, a CD, if circular you will. media known as yeah. compact discs. So, for all you people who don't know what the save icon is, no, you know. zoomers. Well, usually the save icon is a floppy disk. Yeah, the circular compact, compact disc. Yeah. Well, I'm saying people don't know what the save icon is. People think like they see a floppy disk and they think people three printed the save icon. <laughs> uh all right next new matcha for snes i don't know anything about this oh yes this is uh this is cool uh nintendo sold over 49 million super nintendo consoles but not all of them were created equal later hardware revisions improved on the quality of snes's video output and over three decades later one modder has come up with a way to bring those same improvements to nearly every Super Nintendo ever released. Zach Henson, a console modder known as uh, Voltaire, uh, has created a DIY modification for older Super Nintendo consoles called the Edge Enhancer. Expected to sell for around $60, the mod kit upgrades the console's video output, making graphics appear more sharper and colors more saturated. Although Nintendo made many revisions to the Super Nintendo's hardware during the console's production run, for retro gamers, there are essentially two versions of the system that matter. The original, which is now referred to as the H, uh, the SHVC, or two-chip model, and the upgraded version that came out later, known as the one-chip model, based on how Nintendo labeled its motherboard. The two-chip SNES featured a video digital-to-analog converter uh, in its picture processing unit, PPU, that gamers have since discovered wasn't able to quickly transition between different colors. This resulted in a video output that tended to look soft or blurred uh, because the graphics appeared to have a halo or shadow around them. This but looks awesome. The problem wasn't noticeable in the 90s when everyone played on CRT TVs, but with a Super Nintendo connected to a modern display, the, difference, the differences are more prominent. Uh, for later one chip, versions of the Super Nintendo. The company merged the, t the original's two video chips and CPU into a single chip. It was a cost-cutting move uh, to make it cheaper to manufacture the console, but the new components also resulted in video output that was much sharper with noticeable improved colors. Uh, for retro gamers who prefer to play on original hardware, the one chip Super Nintendo consoles are now very much sought after and can sell for well over $200, but demand could soon be waning thanks to this new upgrade kit. Installing Voltaire's Edge Enhancer mod isn't for beginners, as Tito Perez from YouTube's uh, Macho Nacho Productions recently demonstrated. Uh, not only does the SNES have to be completely dismantled, but there's quite a bit of soldering involved. It looks pretty involved. Um, and you have to remove the original's transistors, capacitors, and resistors from the motherboard. A lot could go wrong when installing the various components needed for the mod. So while Voltaire plans to sell DIY edge enhancer kits uh, w once the documentation and tutorials are finalized, it will initially only be available as part of a more expensive installation service that will ensure the upgrades are done correctly. Pricing hasn't been revealed yet, uh, but given the one chip Super Nintendo consoles are becoming increasingly rare, the edge enhancer mod could still be much cheaper uh, even with the console even with the cost of shipping a Super Nintendo's motherboard off to be upgraded. <sighs> this looks really cool. I didn't even yeah. know you could even get rid of some of this, like, uh, this aliasing. Mm -hmm. Like, that looks... I didn't even know that was yeah. an issue on, on the Super Nintendo. I knew That's about the, 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 um, the two-chip model and the one-chip model. I think there's even, like, three revisions of the one-chip. Um, each, like, slightly tweaked and whatnot. Um, but this is a good aftermarket solution to try and get you know, all SNES consoles like in line mm -hmm. and like modernized for modern play. Fun fact, uh, Voltaire uh, blocked me on Twitter. Really? 
I, I I think it's something to do with the whole Gerard thing. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. But uh, Macho Nacho, on the other hand, uh, he hit me up. He's working on the Gotcha SP, the, the yeah. little SP thing. Uh, and I I mailed him the um, Flex PCB that I've been working on. Uh, okay. And it looks like it might work. I oh, haven't nice. even tested it myself, so I was just like, I haven't tested it, but here you can have yeah. it and try it out. But so that's cool. I got a. I just ordered some more stuff for the Gotcha SP, and I'm going to try it. This seems like a huge pain in the ass, and I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah. Um, but it's cool that it exists. Good job, everybody. Yeah. Everybody involved. Um, moving on. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is this? Launch model Xbox One console with older firmware are reportedly failing to update. So I heard about this. I think I could just summarize it. Okay. Uh, this was tweeted by Digital Foundry. Yes. Uh, that uh, some older Xbox One, apparently S, revision. No, uh, uh, the VCR model. The original uh, 2013 launch models. Oh, as opposed to the Xbox yeah. One. Okay. The original shady Xbox One. Yes. Uh, the old one with old firmware. Uh, they just could not update they were just bricks you couldn't do anything with them Mm -hmm. uh so uh they tweeted about this and it's been fixed you can now uh you can now update it oh it was like fixed like very quickly (laughs) uh and it's because they made people aware of it uh i'd imagine this has been brought up because people were going into the xbox marketplace yeah the Xbox 360 market. You, yeah, yeah. you can access the Xbox 360 marketplace from the Xbox One, right? Am I making no, that No, you can get Xbox 360 games that are sold on the Xbox One are from the Xbox One marketplace. They just put those in the Xbox One marketplace. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Never mind then. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just a coincidence that, yeah. that they that they discovered this. Uh, but yeah, no, they fixed it. They were they, uh, presumably it was some weird like a uh, mm-hmm. you know issue with the way of their firmware was handling updates right. but now it, it it seems like it was an easy fix for them to implement and now everybody's xbox consoles seem to be able to connect and update just fine okay so false alarm everybody okay cool deal i felt bad because i sold my old vcr style xbox one uh and whoever bought that you know i hope it still works for you <laughs> Uh, next Mortal Kombat 1 Year 2 DLC adds Screams, Ghostface, Noob Saibot, and Animalities. Yes! Uh, and as, Conan the Barbarian? Yes. As announced at, uh, San, there wasn't a lot of video game news at San Diego Comic Con last week. Um, this was like the only real video game news that came out of it. Uh, NetherRealm Chief Creative Officer Ed Boon was on hand, uh, to reveal Mortal Kombat 11, a uh, Mortal Kombat 11 style, sorry, Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath style add-on for Mortal Kombat 1. With me? Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, it's that called, is confusing. It's called Chaos Reigns. It is the year two um, DLC. It arrives on September 24th. That expansion will include the following characters. Uh, Cyrax, Sector, Noob Saibot, all classic Mortal Kombat characters. The T-1000 from Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Ghostface from Scream and Conan the Barbarian, the Arnold Schwarzenegger version of Conan the Barbarian. What uh, the hell's Ghostface gonna do? I mean, every season they have a horror movie guy, and Ghostface is like one of the ones they haven't used yet. Uh, F- Cyrax, Noob Saibot, and Sector will be available when Chaos Reigns launches in September. The three remaining guest fighters will be released afterwards at to be announced dates. Cyrax and Sector, the uh, both of who are cyborg ninjas are already featured in Mortal Kombat 1 as cameo fighters, but the new iterations are female human versions of the characters. Uh, voice actors Enuko uh, Okuma, uh, Erika Ishii, and Taji Tang uh, are confirmed for the voices of Cyrax, Sector, and New Saibot, respectively. Tang also voiced Sub Zero in Mortal Kombat 1. So they don't actually show anything about. Uh... A scream conan or uh, uh well usually what they do is like they do like the what the story-based dlc is and then at the end they reveal the guests trailer. and that's what yeah. they did yeah. they, they they just showed their faces they didn't show yeah. anything about uh, them playing roger l jackson the voice of uh ghostface in the scream movies will reprise his role here and robert patrick is going to voice the t1000 wow yeah um also 
Animalities, a finishing move introduced in Mortal Kombat 3, are also returning uh, this year. Those fatality-like moves involve characters transforming into animals and killing their opponents in inventive ways. Um, at the MK1 panel, NetherRealm showed a couple of animality examples. Melina transforms into a praying mantis and eats her opponent. Rain transforms into a pufferfish and then explodes in his victim's mouth. The trailer for Chaos Reigns revealed much more with animality moves. Uh, including a hyena, a hippopotamus, a gorilla, and a scorpion. I wonder who the scorpion is. <laughs> wow, cool. Yeah. I'm not, I don't get excited about fatalities or. Yeah, like. Like, they, I, like it, it doesn't add anything. I know. Like, it, <laughs> it's just a cinematic. Yeah, all like, it is. They're, but they're supposed, they're supposed to be a humiliation thing. Like, you beat your opponent so badly, like it's one more exclamation point. Like I can see that, but yeah, I, I, I that, like I that's guess what it was. That's what it started out as. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess you're right. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the uh, the cast reigns adds a story DLC uh, to the whole thing. The whole package will cost fifty dollars on PS5, PC, and Jesus Xbox. Christ. The Switch version will cost forty dollars. Because they, they know that yeah. version sucks. So Combat yeah. Pack 2 will not be available as a standalone character bundle. So if you want the extra characters, you have to get the whole thing. Which is lame. That is lame. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, quickly, uh, Borderlands Boss says fans will be very, very happy with the next video game. And we're not going to be making people wait for a long time before we announce it. Yeah, I'll just skip to what he said. Uh, I have... I haven't been perfect at hiding the fact that we're working on many things and that's and that we're working on big things. Randy Pitchford, the CEO of um, the head of developer at Gearbox. I thought he was out. Am I thinking of somebody else who's the head of Gearbox that left? Well, Randy Pitchford is like the guy at Gearbox. He's the guy that is a huge asshole. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it it is. Uh, I thought he was out. No, he's still in. Uh, I'm confident that our fans are going to be very, very happy with the next video game project uh, when we are ready to announce it. And I will tell you that we're not going to be making people wait for a long time uh, before we announce it. Pitchford teased that, that the announcement about the next Borderlands film uh, could come uh, before the end of the year. Uh, we'll see maybe sooner. He also adds that I have the biggest and best team that I've ever had working on and what we know is exactly what our fans want from us. So I'm very, very thrilled. I can't wait to talk about it. I wish I could just gush right now because we've got so much to say. I'd imagine they would announce it around when the movie. Yeah. When is the movie coming out? It went, the trailer was during Deadpool. Yeah. Borderlands movie. I think it's this year. It's, oh, yeah, no, it's this year. Oh, look at that. Well, that's the initial release. Uh, August 9th is is why release. All right. Well, then I guess soon we might hear something yeah. about a new Borderlands. We'll see. Maybe they'll wait till the home release, you know, when it's on digital or whatnot. I like Borderlands. I liked the first one. The second one was all right. And then I stopped playing because I started to not like Randy Pitchford. I do not like Borderlands. <laughs> I like the idea of looter shooters. You know what? Playing, I started I was playing. Uh, what's the game? It's like Destiny, but with waifus. What the hell is the name of the game? First Descendant. It's a free to play oh, yeah, Destiny yeah, style yeah. game, but it's third person. It's basically right. just exactly Destiny. Right, right, yeah. Uh, it's pretty good. Right. It's free, so like whatever. Yeah. You can play it on your little handhelds. Nice. Uh, anyway, this, this is the last thing. This is the last thing, and this is uh pertinent. Yeah. Olympics uh, doing some fuck shit. Yeah. Uh, the International Olympic Committee walked away from its partnership with Nintendo and Sega for the long running Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Game Series in order to explore deals uh, with new partners, NFTs, and esports. Uh, as the real life Olympics get underway in Paris, there has been discussion online of uh, there being no Mario and Sonic tie in for this summer's Olympic Games the, for the first time in almost two decades. Think about that. Uh, Speaking with Eurogamer, a veteran behind the series uh, has now said that the decision to end the popular Mario and Sonic franchise rests with the IOC, uh, which chose not to renew its licensing deal with Nintendo and Sega and allowed it to lapse in 2020. Uh, we wanted to 
They wanted to look at other partners and NFTs and esports. Uh, Lee Cocker, who worked on almost every entry in the series, told Eurogamer. Basically, the IOC wanted to bring it back to themselves internally and look at other partners so that they could get more money. Uh, Cocker previously worked at ISM Limited, a sports marketing and digital media firm responsible for managing Olympic game licenses uh, in the world of video games. Over the past 20 years, six Mario and Sonic Olympic Games have been launched beginning in uh, 2007. I did not know uh, that. Subsequent entries tied into uh, London 2012, Rio 2016, and Tokyo 2020. Uh, it also had Winter Olympic versions in Vancouver in 2010 and Sochi in 2014. The Mario and Sonic series uh, has been hugely successful, although later entries suffered from somewhat from the same sports reoccurring. With Nintendo and Sega's mascots ditched, the IOC has gone elsewhere. It's not been well promoted, but this year's Paris 2024 games uh, do have an official video game tie-in. Uh, Olympics Go! Paris 2024 is a free-to-play, smartphone-focused effort from San Francisco and Seoul-based company Enway, uh, which previously developed several Power Rangers games. There's a PC version of Olympics Go 2 released via the Epic Game Store. Those screenshots show the same touch controls and basic visuals of its smartphone version. You compete in 12 Olympic sports such as archery, gymnastics, 100-meter athletics, swimming, and golf. Oh, and there's NFTs too. Join the excitement of the Olympic Games Paris 2024 with Enway's official licensed commemorative Paris 2024 NFT digital pin. Yeah. So maybe it's good that Mario and Sonic like lost out this year. It sounds like they're going in a bad direction. So last week we talked about how they're considering uh, uh, some esports, some games for for Olympic esports. Yeah, uh, and it said what twenty twenty five or twenty twenty six next year. Yeah, and that's confusing because yeah. the Olympics are right now. Yeah. So what does that mean? This is going to be a, a separate Olympic event. It's a event? separate Olympic event. Yeah. Okay, that is just for esports. Yes. And it's backed by Saudi Arabia, apparently. It's being hosted in Saudi Arabia. So uh, that probably means like they are funding it. St- when I heard this, I immediately thought that Saudi Arabia was doing some some weird shit. No, it's part of the it's part of the Olympics. And I mm-hmm. like Saudi Arabia is going through this whole like, you know, they call it sports washing, where they just funnel a lot of money mm-hmm. into getting like sports over there to, you know, hide all their human rights violations that they do. Um, And because they just have an insane amount of money. Yeah, and I mean, it's working. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But that's what I thought. Maybe they were behind the NFT stuff. I'm sure, like, um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that has anything to do with this. No, it, it just, instead of doing a traditional video game, which apparently this is the first time since, like, the 90s there's been no console Olympics game. Like, at all. Like, not even just the Mario and Sonic games instead of doing that uh the olympics are hopping the olympics themselves are hopping on like the the nft trend two years after everybody stopped giving a shit about nfts i wonder if that i mean that could be an old momentum thing like they were doing it already and Maybe. they just couldn't stop uh but i think it might have something to do with them doing the esports stuff and uh, mario and sonic the two yeah. guys didn't want anything to do with it uh and uh backed out yeah because they didn't want to well you know we'll see when next year when there's esports stuff happens if there's an nft stuff involved then that's the reason because uh saudi arabia backed it in a weird sort of way i mean i don't know what this i don't know like what the saudi's history with nfts are or anything like that it's i think my brain is just connecting the dots between uh, uh like dirty money and dirty money right <laughs> you know right it just seems like an obvious connection for them yeah. to be super into nfts um anyway uh i never played Mario Sonic games they didn't look good so no i've heard they're like you know passable at best yeah. you know like they're they're for the kids you know they look like shitty mario party. They are, and mario like, party already look, sucks look like the first one at least was like a landmark game because you had mario and sonic yeah in no, a dedicated a game together for the first time like that was huge that was a big thing and then they just released the same game every like four years yeah all right uh that's it This one's by, uh, it's a quote tweet. The first tweet's from Culture Crave. It says the Xbox 360 store is officially shut down. End of an era. Mm -hmm. And then it's a quote tweet by GameStop. 
GameStop is our I, tweet of the week. I saw this. They said, bet you all wish you bought physical copies now. And that's a good tweet for a lot of reasons. Please elaborate. <laughs> First, because they're acknowledging the shutdown of the Xbox yeah. 360. So already that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Second, they're acknowledging that they were really hurt by digital, by the big boom of digital purchases. Right. And uh, they had the most success during the Xbox 360 era. Yeah. Uh, and then they were immediately ruined by the digital uh, uh, boom. Right. So they are acknowledging that, yes, we have been crumbling because of the di digital boom. And they're throwing it in people's faces. But, like, you walk into a GameStop right now, and, like, most of them don't have Xbox 360 games yep. in stock. Yep. You know, it's just a wall of, like, Funkos and other random crap that you can get at, like, Target for less money. You know, they're, they are, like, the shittiest store that should have gone out of business years ago. George McFarlane just dropped this in the chat. Yes. It's a quote tweet. Thank you. Yeah, let me go to my local GameStop and grab some physical games, and it's all Funkos. Yeah. Like... This company is like hanging on solely from meme stocks and like that can't be sustainable. They, they killed themselves. Yes. I don't want to make it seem like uh, it's just because, you know, yeah. pe people were buying digital stuff. They could have reformed in a way that that fixed things. Like customers hate GameStop, employees hate GameStop, yep. you know, video game publishers hate GameStop, video game journalists hate GameStop, like, nobody likes that store, and they are they're just still around like cockroaches. There, there was, there's a lot of reasons to hate GameStop. Yeah. Um, I thought this was a funny acknowledgement of, of their downfall. You know, if it was any other store, maybe. <laughs> one of their biggest issues was just having so many stores yeah it didn't make any sense yeah every mall on long island had two in it yeah and one immediately out of it yeah and then one down the road yeah. but still that's crazy yeah what other store can you think of that has three within walking distance of a mall starbucks okay well well that's Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, to, I have to think for a second. No, no. Usually, just one though in a mall. There's one in the mall, but like you know, there's one on every corner. Yeah, you'll you'll go down the block if you missed it in the mall. Yeah, you just go two feet and like there it is. Oh, thank yeah. God. Yeah. I like GameStop. Says Wood. No, no, no. You don't, man. No, you don't. You like GameStop because you did a video that did really good <laughs> where you bought every friggin' game in the, in the whole damn store and you got everyone fired who was <laughs> part of the, the thing. That's why GameStop sucks. They fired all the people that were in your video. I Listen, I had a good time at the GameStop that I worked at. But right. I, the company was really hard to work with. Yeah. And... They were pushing a lot of dumb shit that they didn't need to push. I can mm -hmm. understand why customers don't like it. Uh, and my store didn't need to exist because it was the one outside of the mall that yeah. already had two there. All right. Hey, uh, now we'll talk to you guys. Yes. Let's start with people who left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Oh, boy. We got Fred over here dropping us comments. He's... We got one from Charlie Fenn. 14 days early for Life is Strange. As we were talking about getting paying for games early. Yes. 14 days early for Life is Strange. Okay, now that must be a record outside of beta. I'm surprised that isn't getting more attention for us. That's because nobody cares about Life is Strange right now. <laughs> uh, for a story based game that will come back to bite them, as m people may as well watch people play it and just not buy it at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I'd imagine that's publisher uh uh Mandate. pressure. Yeah. yeah. And publishers the publisher's gonna learn the wrong lesson from that. The publisher's oh, yeah. gonna be like, oh, I guess people don't care about life is strange. Yeah. Uh Matt says these days it's not even worth it to play on day one. 
Games still come out buggy with missing content or without proper online support. Waiting for the inevitable day to patch seems to be the more reasonable thing to do. I still can't understand why people rush so much to be the first to play a broken game and get a worse experience. Yeah, he's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh... That's the thing. Usually it's a day one patch. Yeah. Like because I, the game has to be shippable. Yeah. Like I've been advocating for like waiting to play your games for like a long time now. Star Wars Outlaws is coming very soon. Everyone's like previewing it. It looks interesting. I want to play it. I am not playing it in the year of our Lord 2024. I will wait. Yeah. Well, it comes out soon. You might yeah. be, you're probably going to get it uh, with the Target Black Friday deal or the pre Black Friday deal yeah. where they do the buy two going free. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it'll be like half the price. Yeah. I think that day, we've had issues with the day one patch situation mm -hmm. for a long time. How like yeah. games release in a broken state and then they get patched. It's going to get worse if yeah. these games are releasing, uh, 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 have paid releases earlier. Yeah. It's, it's going to be the, 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 the patches are just going to get worse. You know, they'll still consider day one to be, you know, the release date for the masses. And that's when the patch that comes out that fixes everything. Beat em up says I played outlaws. You'll be okay to wait. <laughs> fun are you allowed to say that right now uh i you know what people are releasing their reviews right now yeah. of the gameplay so i think i think he's safe uh doomy doomy says uh renaissance fair that i have been to did not require dress up all the dads were not dressed up with the kids <laughs> and the soccer moms were flinging their dresses their, their dressed up kids oh my god around just carry cash i spent all day without eating because i use all i use is card I yeah, that know. definitely seems like a place that wouldn't accept credit card. I'd bring gold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I did hear, I, I think I looked at the comments yeah. uh, and people were talking about um, how, or uh, maybe people came in my chat and they were talking about how, uh, yeah, there's like themed days. All right. And we like figured it Trying out. Trying to explain how ren fairs work. Well, yeah, because our big issue was that they had like a future. Yeah, the future day. No, time traveler day. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. And we were like, what the? <laughs> Mako Fox uh, says, I used to be right there with Bob. I used to love Game Pass, and it was the whole reason I got an Xbox. But Dad Gum? <laughs> you never heard that expression before? No. Dad Gum? Dog on it? Yeah, along those lines. I've never heard Dad Gum. You have. We used to watch Looney Tunes cartoons. They would say that all the Dog time. Dog on it? Yeah. I've heard that. <laughs> Not dad, dad gum. All I need to hear somebody say it with an accent or something. <laughs> All this news about them is sad to hear because they were doing so good. I know. I'm very disappointed in that and how the, where the industry is going. Yeah. I could just be old though. Yeah. I think kids these days aren't playing games in the same way that that no kids these days are playing like their one game the fortnites yeah. the roblox their minecrafts and whatnot and that's all they're playing they're not playing a wide variety of games somebody asked me uh for a pc recommendation for their kid because they yeah. want to get into pc gaming and i was like what do they want to play and they're like fortnite and that's i was like literally you can get anything for that yeah <laughs> but it's because they watch streamers yeah who are playing on like five thousand dollar pc yeah yeah, no, like that's that's how gaming is now. Like that's yeah. why every company is trying to like create the next forever game, but like nobody wants to play because they already have their forever game. Et Trey says Rocket League would make for a great Olympic esport. I think that opinion. was one of the games that was like passed around as like what would be an esport. It, it was, yeah. Esports still have an issue with uh, um, spectating. Like some yeah. games are just confusing when you're spectating. Yeah, I like, think Rocket League is easy to understand. It's easier. Yeah. You know, I still think fighting games are the best in terms of like it's the easiest you know. because you get one perspective and that's all you need. Yeah. Uh it's there's a little nuance to like what's going on on screen. Like Smash Brothers, somebody who's never played Smash Brothers before yeah. a hard time. If you've never played Street Fighter before, you can kind of figure it out. Yeah. It might get boring seeing the same match over and over again. Yeah. Uh but a game like Valorant is very difficult to watch. Uh, yeah. And CSGO, they're difficult to watch because the perspective changes so much. Yeah. Uh, it would be amazing if you could just pick a guy and watch that guy. Yeah. You know? All right. Uh, now we're in the chat. Yes. Uh, Sir Griffith says Mario speedrunning would be amazing. Speaking of which, uh, I'm doing those weekly... Uh, 
doing the weekly uh Nintendo World Championship. Yeah. Uh I tied for first place in the uh grabbing the morph ball, but oh, look at you. so did everybody else. Yeah. Like like that that was that was like a really easy one. Right. Uh I thought I did good, but then I got the ranking and uh top point one percent for the for the morph ball. Top two percent in the loose change Mario, in which I thought I did good in, but two yeah. percent's not that great. Uh, Death Mountain Duel, I got 08 percent, and apparently uh, Wood ranked higher than me, even though we got the same time. I'm fucking cheesed about that. Yeah. Um, Barrel Roll, uh, which is just the first level of Donkey Kong. Uh, top four percent. I thought I did wow. that really good. Four percent is not that good. And then the last one was uh. Overcome the Underworld. It was a part of Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus is a bad game. <laughs> uh, that was... I got uh, top 4%, right. which still isn't that good. But on top of all of that, I want to show... So I, I thought I did good in the barrel roll, which was get the, the first level in Donkey Kong. Yeah. I thought I like crushed it. And then you get to see what the world record time is. And have you seen this? Check this out. No. This is what the world record guy did. So he's going, he's grabbing the yeah. ladder, and now there's no ladder here. Oh, wait. Yes, there is. <laughs> he just glitches up. Oh, wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. That, that, that's got to be patched out soon. <laughs> so supposedly they're able to like vet that stuff and like yeah. delete the runs, but uh, no one's paying attention. Yeah. But it's been fun. And this week, I think one of the challenges is just beat the first Super Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. So I gotta, I'll be running at this. Um, anyway. Which is insane, since Mario covered every other glitch in the game. Like, patched it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's gonna be glitches. I'm not opposed to glitches uh, being used in Speed runs like yeah. that. Yeah. It's just interesting because you're trying to get the best time and you think you have the optimal route and then someone else comes in. Yeah. But then, like, it, you know, introduces all these problems. Like, did you legitimately beat the game because you used the glitch? Now there's, like, you know, speed running with glitches, speed running yeah. without glitches. Like, it, it, But you need that. Like, yeah. that's... That's gonna have to happen in these. Yeah, yeah. Every game's gonna have some sort of exploit that could. And sometimes mm -hmm. the glitches are fun though. Mm -hmm. uh, and and sometimes it breaks the whole thing. I saw yeah. one that was uh, I think it was Spider Man for the Amiga. Yeah. The second you start the game, you can do some weird jump that just rolls the credits. <laughs> and the guy submitted it yeah. as a speed run, and they rejected him because. It ruins the speed. Yeah. <laughs> it ruins the whole yeah. thing. Hey, Will, have you checked out the Blood Hunt run happening in Marvel right now? Uh, no, I realized that was happening too late. It's, um, it's vampires. They're all, they're, everyone's a vampire now. <laughs> oh. So I'm sure Blade's having a hell of a time. <laughs> like when everyone was a zombie, but now it's, they're, they're vampires? Yeah. Uh, did you guys saw the tweet the Stardew Valley creator made about not charging DLC in his? I did huh? see that the uh, he doesn't charge for DLC with Stardew Valley, the creator. Okay. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. This this game's a free DLC. Yeah. I mean, this game this is like you know one of the more successful indie games. Yeah uh created and like he could have easily charged money for it but yeah. you know no that's good uh, there should be more. i mean i yeah. understand why some games have paid dlc and i understand why some games have free dlc yeah. updates and all of them are valid that's not true yeah sometimes they do it in a weird shitty way but i see the merits to both yeah uh Bob Tower Ma Toe Matter says dad gum. AKA my spirit. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh well, have you seen anything new lately? The boys, the acolyte, Deadpool, and Wolverine. I, I saw Deadpool and Wolverine. He did not see it. No. Uh I have everything spoiled for me already, though. So thanks, Twitter. I didn't like it. 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm hearing. It was okay. You know what? I shouldn't say I didn't like it. I liked it just as much as I liked Deadpool 2, which is, eh, it was all right. I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot of like mixed things. On it, so I'm going to try and see it this week. Uh, I am four episodes into The Acolyte, though, and I am actually enjoying it. It is good. Maybe I'll watch it. I, I think people have to like come around. It, it, each episode gets a little bit better. I think people have to come around to the fact that you know we live in a world where not every Star Wars is going to be the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life anymore. Sometimes it's just... Hey, it's, you know, this is this is good. This is a good Star Wars. I want smaller scale stories. Yeah, and like every I, fucking superhero thing that I see is like the universe's ending. Yeah, and it gets bigger and crazier yeah. every time. And it's just like I just want a small conflict. Yeah, like <laughs> that. That's one of the reasons why I hated Ant Man and the Wasp because uh, the the Quantum Mania because like. The Ant-Man movies, say what you will about them, but they were small-scale stories about a dumb character doing, like, fun things. They were, like, palate cleansers for, like, the apocalyptic Avenger stories. But then you just shove him into an apocalyptic Avenger story, yeah. and it just ruins the appeal of those movies. You yeah. know? Yeah. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man means he does things in his neighborhood, not try to save the world every movie. The universe and the timeline yeah. and all that shit like yeah. i don't need that um man fuck you both that movie was hilarious and we finally <laughs> got the wolverine we deserve all right <laughs> i have not i have not seen the movie yet so i shouldn't uh comment on this but i'm going to say it just because he's in a comic book accurate costume does not mean he's the character you deserve it also towards the end looks bad <laughs> And there's, I'll spoil this, there's some CGI shots where Wolverine is entirely CGI. Yeah. Hugh Jackman, yeah. the man, yeah. is CGI'd into the, into the scene and looks horrible. Yeah. I so, saw somewhere, like, they, when, like, he, I saw the clip where he puts the mask on, hmm. and all the comments were like, the mask is CGI, and I, like, I almost punched my screen. I don't care that the mask is CGI, because there's good utilization of that like like spider-man's when when spider-man puts his mask on in all of the movies yeah it's cgi because there's a weird like yeah the plate. way it stretches yeah yeah the way it stretches is weird so they yeah. do like a weird cut or whatever yeah. and it looks great though when they do it right but in this movie it looked fucking stupid yeah. <laughs> i'll follow up with you will after you have seen it then i'm gonna try and see it this week i feel like you'll think it's fun but i hope so i don't know I'm hearing a lot of people compare it to the Flash, and I fucking hate the Flash. <laughs> that, so I don't, I don't know if you'll hate it. For yeah. I think you'll think it's fun. I don't think you'll hate it as much as you hate the Flash. Okay. Uh, let's talk about this though. Uh, somebody brought up uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Doomsday. Remember that as Doctor Doom. Oh, I'm sorry. Doomsday is a different character actually, from another company. He said Doomsday, so no, I'm going to blame him. They changed the name of Avengers the Kang Dynasty for reasons. They, it's <laughs> now Avengers Doomsday, and they, at San Diego Comic-Con, they revealed that Robert Downey Jr. is playing Doctor Doom. No, sir. I don't like it. Yeah, it's very weird. <laughs> it's very weird. It's very bizarre. Like, why are you going to introduce a multiverse version of Doctor Doom before you introduce the real Doctor Doom? Well... We still don't know what it is. Well, he's going to show up in the end credits of Fantastic Four. They've already, like, spoiled that. And they've already confirmed that Fantastic Four, it takes place in the 60s, but not in the same timeline of the main Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's in another Oh, that's dimension. so annoying. It's like a retro future 60s. They're really... I feel like the timeline shit uh, is used as, uh, like, an easy way out. See, yeah, it's used as an easy way out, but it's also used as like cheap nostalgia bait. Yeah, like they recently did. This is this is DC, and it's the the direct video animated movies. But they did Crisis on Infinite Earth, and Crisis on Infinite Earth, when that story came out, that was made to fix forty years worth of convoluted DC storytelling to try and streamline it. It was not as the animated movie has done it was not an excuse to have cameos and references from other different animated universes same thing with the crisis on infinite earth um tv show that the the cw shows did so like they're using the multiverse now as an excuse for like cheap nostalgia plugs that's what uh 
Spider-Man No Way Home was. That's what The Flash was. That's what, you know, this Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom is screaming to me. You know? And anybody out there who's, like, saying, like, oh, but there's a comic that does it. It's one comic <laughs> that was, like, nobody gave a shit about until now. And it's not infamous Iron Man. That's a different story. That's when Doctor Doom decided to be Iron Man because Tony Stark was off being an asshole. I just think it's a lot harder to make a good story uh, that's uh, cohesive and builds on everything that happened before it. Yeah. Without doing all this weird time shit. Like the yeah. time shit is just like, oh, we got it. We'll just do it. We'll just add another timeline. Yeah. It's, you know? it's, I think the problem is like Marvel made everybody like used to the idea that like, you know, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. Chris Evans is Captain America. Like they standardize like these actors are these characters. And the problem is these characters are bigger than the actors. Like if you want to do more Captain America movies, you need to recast. Yeah. You can't just like be beholden to this one version of the character forever. I, I really think after Endgame, they should have just started over. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> You can reference what happened in the other movies, but yeah. like you need like that's what comic books do. Yeah. They reference what happened in the past. Like Spider-Man still references stuff that happens in the 60s, but Spider-Man takes place in the modern day. So they just find ways to lampshade it. You know, that's what the movies should do, but they're not doing that. Everyone's aging in real time. Yeah. I you know, I'm, I I think it's a bad idea to have Robert Downey Jr. be, be Doctor Doom, but uh, it makes me interested to see it. So it's working. Yeah. And I like haven't that, wanted to see a Marvel movie in a long that's time. That's the problem. Like, I'm going to have to see it. Yeah. Like, I wanted to see Fantastic Four, and I'm still going to see Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four comes out within a week of Superman. And I'm just going to say this right now. I am seeing Superman, like, on release day. I'm more interested in seeing Superman. I'm gonna wait to see. I'm gonna wait and see what the temperature is on Fantastic yeah. Four before I go see that. I wouldn't really mind too much if Robert Downey Jr. was just Doctor Doom and, and they had nothing to do with Tony Stark at all. And then another problem too. <laughs> another problem too. Like the one of the like my only criticism about Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man was that they found every excuse they could to just have him take his mask off. Because I get it. You're paying. A lot of fucking money for Robert Downey Jr. You want to show that face on screen. I understand. Dr. Doom is a character who is wearing his mask 99% of the time by choice. He chooses well, to wear that mask. Well, that's why I think it might work if he's just the voice. If he's just the voice, you're not paying. I mean, maybe you are paying all that that's money. That's what I'm saying. Like, they would have to, they, would, they could pay him less if it's they, just the voice. They are paying him a lot of money. Peter David, who was like one of the like the lead writer on the whole comics for like a decade, has to use a GoFundMe for his medical bills right now. But Robert Downey Jr. gets a private plane, detailed security, um, north of eighty million dollar paycheck to play Doctor Doom. Yeah, uh... but you know, if he just donated that money, there wouldn't be a need for an Iron Man. <laughs> hey, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, there was a tweet that I'm trying to find now. That references all of this. And of course, I'm not going to find it. Um, I can't wait for the new Captain America movie. I have to watch the show, don't I? Yeah, the show helped. The show's okay. I, the show, I, the, I like the show. The, tra the trailer looks really good for the new Captain yeah. America. I do want to... This is the first Marvel movie that I'm like, wow, I, I want to see this. Apparently, like that movie costs like $300 million and they have to reshoot it a bunch of times. So I don't know if that's a good sign. Well, the trailer came up mm -hmm. before Deadpool and Hannah goes, wait, that's not Captain America. Yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you're... Very, you gotta watch a a lot of movies. Yeah. And she goes, "What was the last Captain America movie that I saw?" Yeah, and I said, "The first half of the first one, you <laughs> fell asleep." Uh, yeah. My, my wife likes Captain America. She mostly just likes Bucky. So I know the whole movie. She's gonna be like, "Where's Bucky?" I Honey, he's in Thunderbolts. I can't wait for <laughs> Thunderbolts. I told her, uh, I told Hannah to just watch Infinity War and Endgame. Right. Just watch those, two and it'll be fine. Yeah, everything will be fine. Yeah. I guess, yeah. 
You'll figure it out. I, yeah. hey, I watched the last episode of uh, uh, Breaking Bad, and I feel like I got everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Toe Matter is a character from the movie Cars. Oh. Oh, oh Mater. Toe Mater. Yeah, uh, Larry the Cable Guy. Larry character. the Cable yeah. Guy. Okay. And he says dad gum. He says it in a, in a Larry the Cable Guy accent. Yes. So maybe that makes sense. Yeah. I put Captain America on when I want to take a nap. Well, that's what Hannah does, apparently. Yeah. Um, what's a movie that is considered critically bad, but you still enjoyed? Oh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Transformers 1, the first Michael Bay Transformers movie. I enjoy that one. What about the 80s movie? That, that too. Was little that less. critically good? Or, or? No, that is not critically good. I loved that, that movie. <laughs> I saw it in a theater. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, that fucking ruled. And all my <laughs> friends were like, you're stupid. I mean, everyone has that movie that like, or several movies that like don't get good reviews mm -hmm. or, and like you just like for some reason like clicks with you. Um, all right. It's, it's been long enough. All right. Uh, Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden or youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, audible.com even but no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms uh all right we got notifications still from oh, show geez. with the seven months hey wolf bros hope you guys are having a good day thank you very much thank have you. a great day uh, oh riley 23 months yo wolf bros how's your tuesday you guys see oh yeah, I read that already, right? The Astrobot controller? Yeah. And Rebova, thanks for the 16 months. And Anthony Mille, thanks for the 100 bits. I'm not even going to read what you said. <laughs> um, what else did I want to say? Uh, oh, uh, we are part of a new beta program with YouTube. Ooh. I forgot to mention this or even talk about it. <laughs> where during the streams, we can have like a super chat goal. Okay. Or a member's goal. Okay. What? should we do with that like what do you mean like if we hit a certain amount of like donations yeah we do a backflip okay. or something so the only reason why i want to do it is because youtube is testing the feature and right we are helping them test the feature okay so they'll like check in and see how yeah. things are going so i guess i'm just asking everybody come up with an idea yeah. like, well next week we'll reconvene and maybe we'll do something yeah you know I have like a member a super chat goal or something. yes and no, I can't do a backflip. Do a backflip. I'll sub right now. No. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks for being here. We're going to raid AJ. Uh, he's playing Smash. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Whoops. Ah.